Hi. <clears throat> Today we're going to work on slant asymptotes. Pardon for the voice for the moment there, but basically what a slant asymptote is, and let's talk about that. If you have a graph, let's say uh, you have a graph that looks something like this. Okay. What you have here is you have more than just a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote would occur somewhere over here, okay, with some intermediate behavior on either side of the asymptote. But you also have what we call a slant asymptote, like so, okay? This green line representing a slant asymptote. That means as x, if you were to take the limit as x goes to infinity of your function, and I'm going to write this as a rational function, which essentially is you're dividing a, a, a polynomial by a polynomial. If you were to take the limit as x goes to infinity, you would get an infinite answer. Okay. Now we know from our study of limits that this occurs in one scenario. That's when the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator. Okay, so this occurs, slant asymptotes occur when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. That's how you can tell. Otherwise, you'll have a horizontal asymptote. So how do we find them? Well, that's a good question. Let's take a look. Let's say we have this function. All right. This, notice the degree of the numerator, is greater than the denominator. As a result, what you have here is you know if you take the limit as x goes to infinity, you're going to have an infinite answer. So we have a slant asymptote. So what to define the actual equation for the asymptote, we perform long division. Okay, And it's a skill that you need to know how to do. Now there are other means to doing this division, but because those means only work with a linear divisor like this one. You're limited in those means like synthetic division. But long division works for any kind even if you have a nonlinear divisor. Okay? So let's take a look at this guy. To do you remember to do the division, you ask yourself what do you need to multiply x by to get x cubed? Well, that's x squared. So I'm going to put it here. Notice I line it up over the squared function. I'll do it in a different color just for help for following along. Okay, so that's x squared. So then we multiply just like regular division. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times that is minus 2x squared. And then of course we subtract. Okay, that means those go. And negative 3 plus 2 is minus x squared. And then you bring down the next term. Okay, so well, let's look at that division. You ask yourself, what do you multiply x by to get negative x squared? Well, that's negative x. And then we distribute, I mean multiply again, negative x times this. So that's negative x squared minus 2x. And we actually plus 2x, huh? And we subtract. Well, both of those go away. Okay, so that means we bring down the 4 and you ask yourself, what do I need to multiply to x by to get 4? Well, you can't. You can't do it without doing some sort of strange division. So this is our actual remainder here. So technically, in our division, we get this in our division. Now here's the cool thing about slant asymptotes. Because we're going to infinity, this guy becomes negligible and we ignore it. So we say y equals x squared minus x, and that is our slant asymptote. All right, well, let's look at one more, okay? 
we'll do one with a nonlinear divisor in the bottom. Like so. Okay. Now I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you two things. One, the nonlinear divisor, and two, notice that we have gaps up here. In other words, there's no x cubed term, but we need to put a placeholder in. All right, and then x squared, and then there's no x term, so we need to put a placeholder in. Okay. Now we may not use those placeholders, but we just might also, so be, be wary. You need to place them in and see what happens. So what I'm going to do is place my x squared. Well, when you multiply x squared to get by to get x to the fourth, oh, that's pretty straightforward, x squared. So that becomes x squared. Oh, look at that, plus x squared. And then, of course, subtract. I mean, x to the fourth here. Sorry about that. Those cancel. Those cancel. Oh, how about that? Oh, my pen just doing strange things. <laughs> that was pretty wild, wasn't it? Let me undo that. Oh, what was that? Okay, interesting. It's doing some very odd developments there. It's like putting an extra outer layer on. So let's redraw that, okay? X to the fourth plus x squared. Sorry about that these cancel and we're just left with there was a 6 over here okay bring down the 6 and so we have a remainder so our slant asymptote is just equal to x squared and that is our answer okay sometimes that happens when they all divide out sometimes they get a little more complex so it's just things you need to be aware of all right so remember, the key to finding a slant asymptote is that the numer degree of the numerator, as in this case, is higher than the denominator, and to find them, you have to use long division. All right, well, thank you very much.